Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd in the Street, and today we are taking a look at the Olive Video Editor. Alright guys, so I made a video a little while ago about the new refactored version of Caden Live. In that video, I mentioned that Caden Live seemed a little bit slower than it used to be. All right, still a little bit laggy. You can see the the waveforms are being regenerated every time I make a clip. Some of my muscle memory is a little bit faster than the program here, I feel again, like. I now, as I found out after I finished that video, the new version of Caden Live is actually much slower than it used to be, and it gets slower the longer your clips are. See, in that video, my demonstration was using about a 10-minute video clip and so Caden Live was a little slow, but you guys know most of my videos are 30 to 45 minutes. So I've got raw clips I'm dropping in that are 45 minutes to an hour long or more. And when I drag those into Caden Live and I start to zoom in in the timeline, the audio thumbnails just make the entire program slow to a crawl with this refactored version of Caden Live. I actually downloaded an older version of Caden Live and used that for a video or two. But of course, the older version of Caden Live had bugs in the keyframing system, which are fixed in the newer version, but the newer version is too slow for me to use properly. So I was kind of panicking. I sent a message or two in the Caden Live mailing list, letting them know about that. I opened up a few issues actually on their GitLab instance. And while they've acknowledged that the performance performance of Caden Live 19.04 can be improved on, they have not acknowledged that it makes the program unusable, and rather than focusing on fixing that, they're actually moving on to now refactoring other sections of Caden Live, such as the titler, and rebuilding those in QML, which is what they did with their timeline to make it so slow. Now, I appreciate the Caden Live developers, I really do, and I believe that Caden Live will get back up to where it was before in performance eventually once the developers have enough time to work on it. But I'm making videos now, and I needed something faster. Now DaVinci Resolve does not work on this computer right now. It's not open source, so I don't like using it anyway, but I did consider it because of the issues I was having with Caden Live. But it doesn't work on this computer because right now I've got the open source AMD drivers installed. I don't have the proprietary AMD GPU Pro drivers installed right now. And so DaVinci Resolve does not even open up. OpenShot is not up to my standards, and there are some other video editors around that have been floating out there for a while, Shotcut, Flowblade, and they were made as alternatives to Caden Live, but they're all based on MLT, which is the rendering engine that Caden Live uses. And MLT has some major limitations. It only uses CPU rendering, both for previewing when you're working on your video and for the final render. Now the final render, it can take hours for all I care. What I'm worried about is how quickly the previewing capability is when I'm making cuts and I'm adding effects. Can I watch that and see what it's going to look like in real time while I'm editing? That's what I really need. And with MLT, the answer is no, because it can't really use the GPU for much previewing. There are some experimental GPU previewing features that don't support very many effects, but for the most part, MLT is solely CPU-based, and even with a 16-thread processor like I've got, if I overlay one video on top of another and I hit play in Caden Live or Shotcut or Flowblade, the video just stutters and stutters, and I can't really see what a cut is going to sound like, what it's going to look like. However, a few months ago, a viewer recommended to me a new video editor called Olive. It's still in alpha, but it is already, I'm going to say it's already better than the current version of Caden Live. It's nearly as stable, and it is much faster. It does not use MLT, it uses its own rendering engine. That rendering engine has some GPU support for playback, it is CPU only for the actual final rendering, which once again, I don't care as much about the speed of that, I care more about my previewing capability. So the first video I made with Olive was actually the Cisco router video I made a while ago. That was a video where I had my webcam overlaid over the screen recording that I was taking when I was dealing with those Cisco routers. Caden Live was not able to handle that. Olive was. I was able to edit that video and watch it back in real time, see what cuts I was making in real time in Olive. So that was the first video I used Olive for. I actually edited part of that video in Olive and then rendered that and dragged the result back into Caden Live. However, my past few videos I've actually made entirely in Olive. My video about Symphedum, I made that entirely in Olive. And the Nerd on the Street seven year montage, which the montage videos are always a big complicated project that Caden Live struggles with. Don't get me wrong, Olive had a few glitches while I was working on that because it was a very complicated project, 
but I made that entire video on Olive as well, and it was all in a single project file, something that Caden Live would have never been able to handle. It was just, it was hundreds of clips, frame by frame editing, and I was just so impressed with the performance of this video editor. So I'd like to show it to you here today. I'm going to demonstrate Olive. Now I will say it is still in alpha. There are a few missing features that I'll talk about that would be nice. For the most part, it is ready for use in my opinion, as much as any other Linux video editor at least. However, if you ask the developer, he will tell you it is still in alpha, and if you report bugs, he will remind you it is still in alpha. It's actually undergoing a sort of refactoring of its own right now, and the current most up-to-date version on GitHub doesn't even build. But the latest release does work very well for me, so once again, I would like to show you that right now. Without further ado, I'm going to cut to the desktop and show you Olive Video Editor. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys, and here we are on the desktop. I do have here Olive's GitHub page open. I just want to show you before we jump into the program itself. You can see Master is under current development. The last commits were last month. The developer has taken a little bit of a break over the last month or so. The most recent release, which I am using, is release 0.1.0. It is obviously based on that version number an alpha release. And this continuous build is the current master from what I understand. Now if we scroll down here, you can see a quick screenshot of the program. We're going to go to the program in just a moment, so we won't worry about that too much. The program does have its own website as well, which is a very nice looking website, if a little generic. But this website has links to various places, including a Patreon page. And there are actually 87 people supporting Olive on Patreon here. So this is here if you try out Olive and you decide that you really like it consider becoming a patron. And Olive does have a Discord server as well if you want to chat with other users. I've already talked a little bit on it like I mentioned earlier. So with all of that out of the way, we are going to go ahead and open up Olive. And it's going to open on my other screen, but when we first open it up, we will get this Welcome to Olive screen. And this opens up every single time you start the program right now. There's no way to turn it off. It's reminding you that the software is in alpha. And this is GPL software, which I love. Um, but they do say if you have paid for this software, you have been scammed. Um, of course, people are paying for the software voluntarily on Patreon, so that's a little bit of an inaccurate statement, but here I will drag Olive and resize it to fit my screen recording here. Olive is written in Qt. It does not use QML, but it is written in Qt, so it integrates very nicely with the KDE Plasma desktop environment, as you can see here. It's got the same breeze dark theme as all my other applications, and this is what it looks like. It's a fairly standard setup by default. And to demonstrate this editor for us today, I am going to use a recording from a few years ago. This is just a recording that I took and never ended up publishing. I still might not end up publishing it. Basically, I bought one of those USB DVD drives because my laptop didn't have one. And this was before I had my current desktop. So it was an LG DVD player and burner, and I recorded an unboxing of it. I didn't record an introduction, I just recorded the unboxing. And so I'm going to drag in our audio, which is in WAV format, and here I've got the original MP4 video from my video camera. Now if I open this up, you'll see this is a 1080p video, and this is straight from my video camera in MP4 format. Now I've got my conversion script in here, and if I were to run this conversion script right now, it would convert this MP4 into an MOV ProRes file, which is what I had started doing to make Caden Live run a bit faster. But I'm not even gonna do that today. So keep this in mind, I am dragging an MP4 video into Olive right now. This is inter-frame compressed video, which is not good to edit in. Caden Live worked much faster with properly intra-frame compressed video than inter-frame video, but Olive works good enough with MP4. I don't even need the conversion script anymore, really. So for now, we're gonna leave it in MP4. If we run into issues, maybe we'll convert later. But for now, let's come back into Olive here. Now, I've got all the sizes set up for my big 32-inch 4K monitor, so you'll have to excuse the need to resize things now and then here. But to get started, it's really easy to use. All we do is we drag clips from our project bin down into the timeline area, and that will create a new sequence. Now, at first, I didn't like this. This is a problem I have with editors that aren't Caden Live. Caden Live, it starts you out with a set number of tracks, and you can add more tracks, so you can remove tracks, but it, it's laid out for you. A lot of other editors, including Olive, they just give you this blank space. So what we do is we drag our video down here and we just drop, and it creates our first couple of tracks for us. Now this actually reminds me of Final Cut Pro 10, because now, for one thing, we can see it created our, our sequence up here, sequence 01. And yes, this does mean we can have multiple timeline sequences in the same Olive video editor file, in case you're wondering. But what we can do now is we can drag our audio down here, and you can see we can either drop it right on top of our other audio, or what I'm going to do is drop it below the other audio so we can sync it up. 
and you can see we've got audio waveforms. Now, Caden Live's audio waveforms take a while to generate. Olive had some issues generating waveforms for my 27 hour recording of Extra Life last year, but for anything less time than that, it seems to do pretty well. So we can start scrubbing around here and you can see we can pretty much jump anywhere in the video. Once again, this is MP4 video. So this should be moving slowly, but it's actually moving quite quickly because it is GPU accelerated. So we'll zoom in here and we'll use our audio waveforms to align the video with the audio. And let's just take a listen here. So here is the- All right, so that is very well lined up. Um, if you want to adjust the height of these tracks, that is also easy to do. All you have to do is hover your mouse at the top or bottom of a track and drag. So as you can see, this is making the video track larger and now we've got a thumbnail over here. We can also make our audio track larger and we could make the other audio track larger as well. I'm not going to do that because these are the same audio. If we hover our mouse in between the video tracks and the audio tracks, we can click and drag up and down to move our entire timeline up and down in this window, which is cool. Now, one thing about this timeline is if I click and drag just anywhere on the timeline, you'll see I've got a selection box here and I can use that to select clips. In Caden Live, I could click down here to scrub. You can't do that in Olive. If you wanna scrub, you've gotta scrub up on the top here where the timestamps are. But I actually like the ability to have this, this selection box. I didn't like it at first, but it has grown on me. So now that we've got this audio lined up, so here we wanna mute the video because we've got our other audio on top of it. So for that, we can just click on the video and we've got this video effects section up here and I'll make our top section a little bigger. Now this effects section, if you're clicking on say an audio track, it's just going to show you the audio effects. This is an audio and a video clip linked together and I can actually right click this and well, there's an option off the screen down here that says link slash unlink. It's past the edge of my screen recording way down here. I can click that to unlink these. I've also bound that to control G because I'm used to grouping and ungrouping that way in Caden Live. So we can unlink these and now you can see I can click the audio track to get the audio effects. I can click the video track to get the video effects. So I can click our audio track here and I can just drag volume all the way to negative infinity decibels to effectively mute this track. I could of course just delete the audio at this point but I'm gonna keep it just cause this is how I normally work. And at this point I'm going to group all of these tracks and now I can so play. So here is the DVD drive that I- And we've just got our audio from my Blue Yeti I was using to record this at the time. So I've set S to split and I can click here. I can, here, why don't I show you real quick where I went to configure all of these custom keyboard shortcuts I'm about to demonstrate. If you go to preferences and then you go to keyboard, this is where you can set your, your keyboard shortcuts. So if we look at tools here, this will go between your different types of tools in the timeline. Uh, we've got edit here. And so split I've set to S. That was what I was about to demonstrate. I, like I just said, I set delete to the delete key and backspace to ripple delete. So I can either just get rid of this section here or I can hit backspace and it both gets rid of these clips and it moves everything after it back. Now we've got some empty space at the beginning of our project here. I can right click and click ripple delete empty space and that will bring all of our content to the front of the timeline. And so now I can start playing. So here is the DVD drive that I picked out. And I can hit S to make a split in the video once again, like I mentioned before. And now I can drag this around as a separate clip. I'm using control Z and control shift Z to go back and forward here in my actions. And I actually don't wanna cut there so I'll control Z one more time and we'll just kind of watch through this and see where we can edit here in a moment. Doubt. I got it from Micro Center, as you can see there, maybe. I recently discovered Micro All right, so there was a little bit of a, a delay there in between a couple of my words, so we'll make a cut there. And as you can see, when we're scrubbing around in the timeline, we do get audio previewing. So we can hear when my voice starts. We can hear when good times to cut are. So here, once again, you can see if I hit delete, I've set that to remove our clip, or if I hit backspace, it brings the next clip back so that there's no gap there. And this greatly improves my workflow. That's something that I learned from DaVinci Resolve, but then brought it back to Caden Live and now Olive to use in my workflow. There, maybe. I recently discovered a micro sensor. Um, Michael showed it to me, actually, in St. Louis. I didn't realize we had a store like that, but very handy, way better than Best Buy. So you can see here I'm having to scroll while this video is playing to keep up with it. If we go up here to the tools menu, we've actually got a couple of options here. One of them is page auto scroll, and this is the default. And this means that once we get to the end of our window here when we're playing, 
I'll just zoom in a little bit. You can see the timeline just scrolled an entire page forward because our playhead went from all the way on the right side of the screen to all the way on the left side of the screen. Now we can also turn off auto scrolling or something that I do sometimes is I turn on smooth auto scroll, which means that when we start playing here, but here, as you can see, as you can see, it's, it's L scrolling. LG. Let me mute my system here. It's scrolling and it's keeping the playhead in the middle of the screen. Now, sometimes this is a little annoying. It gets to be a bit much, but sometimes I do leave it on. So I'm going to turn this back to page auto scroll for now. Now this is about a, a 15 minute video here. And I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me edit this whole thing. I do want to show you a few more features of Olive here. For one thing, titling. People like to add words over their videos, text. How do we do that? So I'm going to move our timeline down here a little bit to make some space up above our top video track. And I'm going to come to the left side of the timeline. I'm going to click this plus button. Now there are several options here. One of them is title. So I can click that and now I can just click and drag in the timeline where I want my title to go. So if I want this title to last for one second, I can drag it to exactly one second. Now if I click on this title, the titler is something that could be a little bit improved. It's very flexible. It just takes a while to get things exactly where you want it. So I can click edit text here and you can edit it even just in this box. So I can type hello there in this box. But for font options and whatnot, I have to click edit text. And then I actually, if I just change any of these settings here, it won't actually take any effect. As you can see, I have to select the text, then apply my settings. So I'll set the Ubuntu font here. I can set the size to 120 for this text. This is where we set our, our color if we want one. I'll just click OK for now. So now the text is a bit bigger. There are several different ways we can position the text. We can use the regular old position and even scale. That's making the text a bit fuzzy if we make it too big, but we can use the regular video effects on text tracks because it is effectively a video track. However, we can also use the position down here under text that's a bit easier to work with. Now there is a handle over here and it tempts you to just click and drag, but that doesn't actually affect the position of our clip here. As you can see, it does adjust the position, but it also adjusts the anchor points. So this is canceling itself out when we're adjusting this using this handle. That's something that I'm not sure why that works that way or why that handle's even there. So maybe that'll get touched up in future versions. Now I always like to add a little box behind my text tracks. And in this case, it's a little bit more difficult to do than in Caden Live or DaVinci Resolve. In Olive, we can very easily add a shadow. I can check this box here and this isn't the best place to do it. Let me put this text over here. Let me, let me put it over an actual picture so that it's a bit harder to read. So you can see this text isn't showing up very well because it's white text on a white box. We can sort of see it, but I want to make it stand out more. So for one thing, we can check this shadow box. It actually does nothing by default. We can select our color. I'll select black. Once again, it has done nothing so far. We can adjust our shadow softness and you can see as I turn this shadow softness up, it starts to make the shadow expand out from the text. So we can start to see a little bit of an outline around the text. There is an angle option that we can use um, and a distance option. So using those, we can choose exactly where we want the shadow to show up. Uh, personally, I like it centered with both the angle and distance set to zero and I just turn the softness up a bit so I can see it but this still isn't very easy to see. I really just like having a translucent box behind the text. So for that, I'm actually gonna turn the shadow off. I'm gonna move our title up one track here and you can see all I had to do, there was no video track up here already, but I just click this title track and I drag it up and it gives me the option to create a new track in our timeline that is now just housing that title. I can even move it up another one if I wanted to. There's no reason to do that because some of these are just empty. You can see it removes automatically unused tracks when they're on the top or bottom, but it keeps the ones in the middle. And I think that's a good balance between flexibility and, and rigidness in terms of the usability of the program. If you want for some reason to make a bunch of empty tracks as placeholders, you can do that by moving a track up a bunch of times. But at the same time, you don't have to worry about managing a ton of tracks. If you do want to delete some, just move everything in and the program will automatically clean up your timeline for you. So now that we've got this empty track in between our title and our video, I can go over here and click plus again. And what I've started doing is I just use a solid color generator. Now this is red, which is not what I want. So I'll click on the solid color track here. I'll go into our color palette and I'll select black. And I'm going to set our opacity to 50%, we'll say. Now I can set our scale down and this is actually a relatively easy word 
but if the word was not at a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, all I have to do is uncheck uniform scale. Now I can set our height and width independently of one another. I'm going to turn this opacity up to 75% actually, and that is very nice there. So we've now got a translucent box right behind this text. Now if we start adjusting the position of the text, then of course we'll have to go and adjust the position of our background to match. I think for me personally, one of the best improvements to this program that could be made right now is the option to generate a background box as part of your title track. But I am perfectly happy with the functionality that we have here. The developer built in the tools for us to do what we need to do here. It just takes a couple of steps. I will show you here, we can make a split in our video. I'll make it a bit longer than that. When we've got video clips, we can click and drag the ends of them to resize, which I do very often when I'm editing. You can see there is a little bit of a snapping action happening here. If you look at that tooltip, it says plus zero frames right now, and then when I start dragging, it snaps to minus three frames, and then it goes to minus four, minus five. So if you want to make finer grained adjustments, you can turn snapping on and off up in the tools window or menu, and there's this option to enable or disable snapping. I've set that to G for guide. So if I hit G, now I can adjust as just minus one frame, minus two. And likewise, if I do adjust this right now, snapping is turned off so I can drag this anywhere I want, but it's not really helping me. If I hit G again, now it's going to snap to my playhead. It will snap to other tracks, as you can see. So very easy to use, very easy to configure. I really like it. Um, and then finally, for this portion of the video, we can change our position of the video, like I said. We can change our scale of the video. There is a rotation option. All of this is actually keyframeable too, so we can set keyframes on all those things, and then we can come over here later in the video. And we can change them some more. And so now we've got an animation there going. And I'm just going to come to the front of the video here as well, and we will create some new keyframes, and I'm going to blow the video up really big here, flip it around. We'll even change our opacity to 88% there. So now we've got this ridiculous here, animation there. So that's nice. Uh, and I am going to mute this as well. There we go. So we've just got a nice little animation. Um, the reason I'm showing you this isn't because I actually animate like that in my videos. It's, it's to show you we are live animating an MP4 file. So this is an intra frame video file that should take quite a bit of horsepower to even play back. And we are showing that in our preview, spinning around and zooming in and out. And look how smooth I'm able to pan around in here. Anybody who's used Kaden Live before or other Linux video editors should be impressed by this. It is, it is very fast. I, I, commend the developer of Olive. You did a great job. And we can see, I think, in our about here, oh, they just say Olive Team. I know the guy's name is uh, at least on GitHub, I think, and maybe the website. But the, the Olive Team, the Olive developer, has done such a wonderful job of, of making a video editor actually play back video in real time. Um, you know, because I don't really care about, like, color management and all these bells and whistles that, that Caden Live brags about sometimes. But just being able to preview what I'm doing in real time, hear what cuts sound like, see what cuts are going to look like without having to render and check and then go back and make adjustments and render again, being able to preview it the way it's going to look after we're done. It is just so incredibly powerful and I am loving this video editor. So at this point I'm going to save this project. It's obviously nowhere near done, but we'll go ahead and click save and we'll go into our LG DVD player unboxing. And I'll just call this LG DVD player unboxing. We'll save this file. Now I do want to show you real quick. One thing I always loved about Caden Live is that its editor files were XML files. So if a Caden Live project was ever corrupted, I could open it up and repair it manually in a text editor, and it was no big deal. Olive also uses XML. I do not believe that it is compatible with any other video editor's format, but it is XML, so you can open it up. You can see our project here the version of the program you created the project with, the URL of the project. It's very easy to relink media. Let's say if I renamed this video file or I moved it to another folder, I can just come in here and right click this and click replace slash relink media. 
and I can select the new clip that is going to fill in anywhere where that clip is located in the timeline. You can see it just regenerated my thumbnails there when I did that. However, if you wanted to do that manually in the project, I could control F for that video. And if I search the name of the file here a couple of times, in the timeline, it's just using the clip ID, but if I find the actual footage entry in the XML, you can see the URL is p100710.mp4. Now let's say that I move this out into my home directory here. It's actually going to, if I relink this, you can see at this point, playback will be broken because I've just moved that file, but I can relink it, go to my home folder, select the file, and it's back. And now if I look in here again, I'll need to save my file for uh, KWrite to pick this up. So KWrite's telling me that this file has changed. I can view the difference here. And we can see that when I just saved that after relinking the new URL, it uses relative URLs, uh, which is great. So this URL, it's the containing directory of my project folder, which is my videos folder, and the containing directory of my videos folder, which is my home folder, and that's where the file is. This means you can move project folders between different hard drives, different file systems, and you don't have to worry about the full path of a file changing. You only have to relink your media if the relative path of the file changes. I could see arguments for wanting it the other way too. I could see, well, a few arguments I could see for wanting it the other way. But overall, I'm very, very happy that it works this way. Now, I don't actually want that video sitting out there, so I will Control Z in Dolphin, and I'll come back in here and relink this once again back in the proper folder. And now I'm going to show you how to render. So we can render very easily by going up to File and Export, and this opens up our export box here. Now, this is one other area that could be polished. It works perfectly fine, but it could be polished a bit. Under our format, I want to render out to MP4, but there are lots of other rendering options. We can render out to ProRes, which Caden Live can't really do uh, without doing some, some custom profile work in Caden Live, but it's built right in here to Olive to render out to ProRes, which is cool. Uh, we can render out to like DNX HD, that's up here, but I'm going to render out to MP4. We've got LibX264 and 265, so we can render to H.264 or H.265, also known as HEVC. I like doing H.265 because the video files are a little bit smaller for the same quality. We can set our width and our height that we're exporting to. We can set the frame rate that we're exporting to. This is set automatically based on our project file, and our project file was actually set to 29.97 frames because this camera recorded at 29.97 frames at the time. Most of my videos I set to 30 frames per second. I have not had any issues with Olive um, handling multi-frame rate video, like having one clip in 30 frames per second and another one in 29.97. I have not had any issues with that yet. I know the Nerd on the Street 7 year montage had some 29.97, it had some 30 frames per second, and it had some 60 frames per second, and Olive just handled it all mixed in together just as well as Caden Live did. But for our export frame rate here, we'll just leave it at 29.97 since that's the only frame rate in this video. Um, now our quality, I'm going to set this to 18. This is what I always render at for Nerd on the Street. Lower is better here, better quality. Now down here under bitrate, in Caden Live, I always set my bitrate to 384. Now all of the highest you can go is 320. You can see the up arrow is grayed out here. I can go down to 319, but I can't go any higher than 320. Is the difference between 384 and 320 kilobits per second actually noticeable? Probably not, but I always just liked 384. That's DVD quality from my understanding. 320 is CD quality, I believe. Of course, our sampling rate is still DVD quality with 48,000 sampling rate as opposed to 44,100. I don't know why they put the limitation of 320 kilobits per second in here. If that has to do with the programming, if there's actually something harder for the programmers to do to enable 384, or if this was just an arbitrary cap they set in place for whatever reason, I have no idea. Um, but we'll go ahead and leave all this at the current settings. Now we can either render out our entire sequence, or our entire timeline, or just an in point to an out point. Normally I render out the entire sequence. Right now I'll show you how to render an in point to an out point. Now when I click cancel, everything I just set here is going to be lost. That's my least favorite thing about the exporter. The exporter works great, but it does not save your settings. Every single time you export, you have to reset all your settings. Uh, so I'll click cancel there. Even if I hadn't clicked cancel, if I had clicked export and then I wanted to make a change and then go back and export again, I would still have to re-enter in all of my settings. 
But to set our endpoints and our out point here for rendering, I can just right click a point on the timeline, click set endpoint, and actually the endpoint here, it, uh, it didn't go where I right clicked, it went where my playhead is. So we'll set our playhead over here, we'll set our endpoint, we'll put our playhead over here, and you can see if I right click, this has I and O set to it. So I can just hit O on the keyboard to set my out point. If I wanted to move my endpoint, I can move my playhead somewhere else and hit I. So now this blue section is all that's going to be rendered. All right, so we'll go up here, we'll click export. As you can see, it set all my settings back to the defaults. So we're going to set our range to int to out, and we're going to move our codec to H.265, quality 18, and bit rate 384, oh, no, 320 for audio. See, if I try and type in 384, it, it just it won't let me type the four in. Um, it doesn't let you even type in higher than 320, but we'll set all of that, click export, and it's going to ask us what folder we want and what our file is going to be called. I'll say render.mp4. We'll click save and you can see we don't have any previewing and that's fine. This is CPU rendering, like I said. If we open up um, my system monitor here, KSysGuard, we can see my 16 threads of processor working hard there. We can look in my, my process table. Olive is using 70% of my CPU right now. And we are using about six, uh, well, between, between three and six gigabytes of RAM depending on the exact second. And Olive is very good at utilizing your system resources. It may not be the best optimized program. It might use more RAM than another program might use for the same task. I noticed that Olive uses significantly more RAM than Kden Live. But you know what? It's a ton faster, and I've got 94 gigabytes of RAM anyway. This is exactly what I want, is a program that uses the hardware in my computer. I don't want Kden Live struggling to play a video on my beast of a machine. Um, and hardly using any of my system resources. I want, I want this. I want a program that is taxing my RAM, taxing my processor, taxing my graphics card, and giving me a great experience for it. Now one thing before we go and look at the export we just made, I do want to show you, if we go under tools here and preferences, there is an option to set how far you want to buffer. There are some other options, thumbnail resolution, waveform resolution. You can set your appearance in here. And this breeze dark theme, actually, I had to change this to the native theme. There is an olive theme by default, which looks nice as well. I just like having olive match K Wright and Dolphin and all the other programs on my computer with breeze dark. Uh, but if we go to playback, you can set your cue for how far olive is buffering. And this is going to affect your RAM usage. I have witnessed it. If you turn these numbers up, your RAM usage will go up. Um, but you can set how many seconds or frames in front of and behind your playhead you want Olive to buffer. Now, when I set this too high, I did have some instability. Olive did crash when I set this to like 10 or 15 or 20 seconds. I don't remember what I set it to uh, when that happened, but I normally leave it at two seconds in front and behind. Um, I think the default is two seconds ahead and only like five frames behind. But very often when I'm editing, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm pausing the video, making a cut, uh, cutting out somewhere else, dragging these together, and then I'm moving this back a couple seconds to hear how it sounds with the cut. So I'm clicking backwards in my edits very often. That's why I increased my play cue for the previous frame cue up to two seconds. And if you find that you are having to buffer too much and you've got the RAM to spare, I love that you can come in here and adjust this. This is absolutely great. All right, so with all of that said, and there are other options in here as well, audio options and whatnot, um, image sequence options. I've used image sequences already. It's really easy to use image sequences. It's easy to set their frame rate when you import those. Uh, but we can come in here to our LG DVD player unboxing folder and we can open up a render here. Of course, this render is going to be nonsensical because this was just a, a test edit that I was talking over, but we'll mute this and just watch it back in MPV. And this is nothing special. You know, this is um, rendered video. Any old video editor can render out your video. Here's the crazy effect that we put in. So there's that. And then a little bit later, yeah, we've got our hello uh, text popping up there. You can add fade ins and fade outs if we find our, our title so here. I'm gonna mute my computer once again so you can't hear this while I'm talking. Um, so our text pops in there. We can add a fade in really easily if we just click this, this transition tool right here and click cross dissolve. Uh, we can click and drag to say how long we want the cross dissolve to be. So we'll do a one second dissolve in for both the background box and the text. Um, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll do one second for the text and one second for the background box. 
and now we can watch this again and you can see the text fading in there and at the end fading out. And that also works with video tracks on top of other video tracks and so on. So that is all the video editor. This video has gone on for quite a while, just showing you these basic features, but I hope you're getting an idea of how powerful this is. This was a very simple tutorial and this is a very simple and easy to use video editor. And that's what I love about it. I don't want to have to open up guides and you know read manuals on how to do stuff in my video editor when all I'm trying to do is make simple cuts for YouTube videos. You know, on one end of the spectrum, you've got Lightworks, which you have to have a doctorate in to know how to work. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got like OpenShot, which is just mouse clicking and it takes a while to get things done, but anybody can use it. Um, Olive is somewhere in the middle. It is a little bit more complicated than, than Windows Movie Maker or iMovie would be. And it is a little bit more complicated than Caden Live, but it is well worth it. I love this video editor. And to the developer of this video editor, thank you so much for putting this out. I know it's still an alpha right now. I hope you continue developing this because it is already, I'm going to say the best, free and open source video editor for Linux available right now. As of June 2019, I think the latest version of Olive is better than the latest version of Kaden Live. And Kaden Live has been in development for many years and Olive is less than a year old. So this is truly impressive. So Olive Video Editor is available, like I said, on their website, which is olivevideoeditor.org. It's also available on GitHub and it is in the AUR if you're on Arch Linux, like I am. There's a download button on the front page here. You can get it for Windows and Mac OS, it looks like. And Linux, they do have devs available. There is a snap package available and an app image available, which I like. There's even an unofficial flat pack if you want that. Um, so yeah, it looks like no RPMs yet, but hopefully the app image or the flat pack will suffice if you're on an RPM based distro, at least until somebody comes along and packages it for RPM. So that's everything I had to talk about in this video. If this video was helpful to you or entertaining to you, please consider joining the Nerd Club at nerdclub.nots.co. You can support me in the videos that I'm making for just $3 a month. I like to make videos featuring open source software, using open source software. And in this case, I got to do both with the same program, which is great. Uh, Nerd on the Street's been creating videos for over seven years now, and we are working our way up to our first Patreon goal, which will allow us to host this web server purely from our viewer support. So nerdclub.nots.co to join that. You can read all about it. But for now, that's it. I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm the Nerd on the Street, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.